morning. It is just a great day to be in God's temple today. It is just a great day to be in the presence of the Lord wherever you are at. We welcome you in. We want you to come in, take a seat, and let the Holy Spirit endow you where he needs you to be. Father God, we thank you this morning for allowing us the opportunity just to stand, excuse me, just to stand here this morning to give you thanks. To give you honor and we give you glory. Father God, we thank you for everything that you have done in our lives, that you're doing in our lives, and that you will do in our lives. Because I know that you are a way maker and a promise keeper. Hey, and I thank you for that. Father God, we thank you this morning. Father, we ask that you continue to rain on us with your love and your joy and your peace. We ask that you shine down on us with a special shine that you that we may see that you are in our not only in our house but in our lives. Yeah. Everywhere we go, whatever we're doing, Father God, please lead, guide, and protect. Yeah. We thank you, Father, this morning. We thank you, Facebook family, for being with us and joining yeah. with us. Yeah. Because yeah. without you, God can't God cannot reach you. <laughs> If you don't tune in. So tune on in and let God reach out to you. Father God, we thank you. At this time, we got a special treat. We are going to bring our pastors up. May I introduce to some and present to others, none other than our own Dr. M.K. Oliver from Detroit, Michigan. And First Lady Pastor T. We are so happy to have them with us. Let's give our, our warm Shabbat praise. Well, victory word. <laughs> it's another good day yes, it is. to have a God day. We love you and we thank you for tuning in with us here in the temple, Facebook Live. We're live in the temple and we're just thanking God for this opportunity. Amen. 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 Thank you. You look Amen. good this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank, God. thank God. God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We're just glad to be here yes, yes. this morning. And we're trying a new format this morning here at Victory Word. Uh, we're just we're just thankful, really. Yes, we are. And this is what? Black History Month. All right, all right. Amen. Yes, yes, amen. amen. This is Black History Month. Amen. And so we're going to utilize this month as we honor and we reflect back on our ancestors and those that have made a, a significant uh, contribution to the black community. Amen. 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 But before we get started, let me just say next Sunday, next Sunday, your pastor, Pastor Mike, will be preaching at Faith Assemblies Church in Belleville, Michigan. Okay. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I want all of us that that, that are here today to tune in to our Facebook page on next Sunday as your pastor will be preaching at Faith Assemblies Church in Belleville, Michigan. I can't wait to get there with my brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 I look forward to it. Amen. And so as we go into our service this morning, before we get started, as usual, as usual, Lady T will bring our announcements and she will bring words of encouragement this morning. Amen. Victory Word, give her a hand praise in the house. We're in the house today. Let's know that you're here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, Victory Word. Good morning, Facebook Live family. We welcome you to our cyber and our physical. physical. Yes, our physical sanctuary. Thank God. Thank God. We thank God for each and every one of you this Amen. morning for tuning in and for um, coming into the building this morning. We praise God for you, you, and you. We just want to want you to take some time to come on in and sit on down, give you some time to just get ready and get prepared for what thus said the Lord on this morning. Amen. And we Amen. hope that our efforts and our platforms reach you and touch you in a special way that it, it, it that it brings about transformation in your lives, right, amen? Right, we amen. want to just be open for whatever God has for us, amen? And if we close our minds, then we can't get what God has for us. So stay open, amen? Yes, amen. Stay, open. stay open. 
I just have a few announcements this morning, but at first and foremost, we always start off with our victory word vision. Amen. So Amen. come on and go with me with our victory word vision. All right. All right. right. The victory, victory word church is a place where you'll experience freedom and worship, connection with others through life-giving relationships, compassion for the lost, and the teaching of God's word in love. A place where lives are being changed, hurts are being healed, and hope is being restored. We are empowering lives to live purposely for Him. Come on, put those two hands together. Thank you for vision today, yes. God. Thank you. Thank you. Lady T. Sir. I, I said it almost without looking. I, I did good. Amen. I did good. Amen. 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 Oh, remember, remember, we can do all things through Christ, right? Ain't that what, ain't that what God said? Yes, that's what his word said. We have to trust in him. We have to trust in him. On this first Sunday, February the 6th, 2022, our quote of the week. Stop settling for things that you know don't belong to you. All right, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes, God. Who said that? Dr. M.K. Oliver. Hallelujah. All Amen. Right. Stop selling the things that you know don't belong to you. That's right. <laughs> Look out. Look out. Yes. Ooh, Amen. As Pastor said, on next Sunday, February the 13th, we will be streaming live from Faith Assembly Church in Belleville, Michigan. Amen. Amen. Where our pastor has been invited to preach. To preach the good news, yeah. amen? amen, which is the gospel of God. Yeah. <laughs> so tune in, tune in. It should be an exciting time, and we we just we're just uh, thankful for the different avenues to get God's word across, amen. amen. The different places, amen. different streams. We're just thankful. We're just thankful. Listen, it is what is He Sunday, All amen. Right. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. It's an opportunity to sow a seed into our pastor. You know, <clears throat> pastor salaries these days aren't big or anything. So we, we just always want to be thankful and show our, our our gratefulness to our pastor, our man of God, by sowing a seed on his behalf. And it also first fruit, fruits, not fruit, fruit season. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's first Amen. fruit season. <laughs> From now until Resurrection Sunday, we ask that you plant the seed and watch it grow. Amen. But well, the Bible says, the scripture says, honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruits of all your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And that's in Proverbs 3 9 through 10. Amen. So let's honor God with our first fruits. Amen. 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 And, and we just want to keep reminding you that this is Victory's Words 10th year anniversary. Yes, all right. yeah.
We got to have greater expectations for this year. Amen. In order to do that, we have to do something different. We can't do the same stuff we was doing last year. Amen. We have to. We ask God to increase our territory. Well, that's one way to do it. Have a greater expect expectation of what you want to do for yourself by showing greater expectations of God. Amen. Amen. So remember, it's it's not your money that gets you close to God. It's your obedience. And when we give, we are only offering him a small portion of the abundance that he has already given to us. Yes. So um, as you prepare for your tithes and offering and sewing, those are in the building if you're in need of an envelope. Uh, I think you can pick one up. It's your own. Justin Cochran. Amen. 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 So where you want to grow. The way you want to go, amen. So as you prepare for your giving, please take note of the other various options that you have to do so. You can go to our website at www.victorymurraychurch.org and hit the giving button and you can use your debit card to continue to help in the upbuilding of the kingdom of God and that is via PayPal. You can also make your donations via Givelify. And for those who aren't comfortable with either of those options, you can mail your donation in to... BWC at P.O. Box 361-200, Ghost Point, Michigan, 48236. We are incredibly grateful for those who are who give so regularly. Amen. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And God bless. If you need to reach Pastor Mike or myself, just give us a call on the church office phone at 313-243-4512. If you have need for a special prayer, please make your prayer request at www.victorywordprayerrequest at gmail.com or you can go to our website, www.victorywordchurch.org and hit the prayer request tab and it will go directly to our pastor and we will pray with and for you. Remember to please always keep our pastors and leaders in our prayers, for they are our frontliners. Amen. Amen. Our prayers are purposeless. Our Victory Word Church family, Pastor Dio and First Lady Harvell and New Life Ministries Worldwide, the Spiritual Church and its Army, Pastor Remarco Pittman and the New Prosperity Baptist Church, Minister April Pittman, Bishop Leonard Gardner and family, Pastor Gregory and Lady Smith and the Zion Hill Baptist Church, Pastor James and First Lady Reigns and the Echo Lucia Christian Ministries, Pastor Doran and Lady Morrison and Higher Praise Worship Center. Yes. Pastor James and First Lady Minnick and the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. Spiritual Israel Church and its Army Saginaw Temple. MJM Mark Jalen Oliver. Our Mother Claudia Oliver and Grandfather Bishop Tillman Oliver. Minister LaRue Clay. Sister Marsha White. The family of the late Shanita White. Pastor James Marson family and our Victory Word Church located in the country of India. Pastor Daniel Mosean family and our Victory Word Church located in the country of Kenya, Minister Carol Hicks, Jewel Jones and family, Malcolm Swilly, former Chief James Craig, Minister Sanitra and family in the passing of her grandmother, Alicia Campbell, Detroit Police and Fire Department, all of the school assistants and students on all levels, first responders and healthcare and essential workers, and a special prayer for the sick, the shut-in, and the bereaved. If you have anyone to add to our prayers of purpose list, please give us a call in the church office at 313-243-4512. Don't forget to go to our Facebook page every Monday for the awesome anointed word of the week. And remember, we are Living our future, future now. now. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. amen, amen. So let us prepare for our giving. Amen, it's amen. Giving time. It's giving time. Yeah. Please, uh, please see our show. Please see our show. Victory Word, while we're in uh, the midst of giving, let's just remember that God is still in charge. Yes, yes. He is in charge. We have to be thankful for what he what he has done, what he's doing right now, yes. and what he's going to do. Uh, yes, yes. Look, I'm, I have expectations this yes. year. 2022, yes. this yes. should be our year. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 
What do you mean, Pastor? It's our year, it's our year to praise Him more, right. worship Him more, yes. be more thankful. Yes. All of the things that we have control over. And the things we do have control over is our praise yes. and our worship. Yes. Amen. 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 We're going to worship our way through this yes. year. Yes. We're going to praise our way through yes. this year. Yes. And we are going to expect God to give us the increase. Yes. Do I have any excited yes. people in the sanctuary yes. and watching at home that God is going to do just what he said? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for the seeds that have been sown this morning, Lord God. We thank you for those that was able to give, and we thank you, God, for those who had a heart to give, yes, a spirit to give, yes. and did not have it to give at this time. But we know that their breakthrough mm -hmm. is on the way. Yes, God. And so, God, we're trusting and believing and knowing that you will increase our harvest. Yes, God. So, yes. see Bring me my heart. Yes, yes, Lord. And it is so. And it is so. In Jesus' in name. Jesus Put your hands together and let's pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. So, are you ready for this next day? Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Our pastor is going to um, drop a few nuggets on us, amen. amen. So if you're ready, if you're ready, I need you to stand to your feet, okay? Come on, stand to your feet with me. Those are in in house, those at home, stand to your feet, amen. As I present to some and introduce to others, the shepherd, the leader, the pastor of Victory Word Church, Detroit, Michigan, Show us some love. Back to MK Oliver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated with your word. I've been waiting all week long to worship God with anointed vessels just like you. Amen. Would you turn to your neighbor and just say, neighbor, neighbor. it's another good day to have a God day. I love you to life in Christ Jesus loves you all the more. Would you look across the aisle at your neighbor across the aisle and just say, good morning, neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. It's another good day, it's another good day. To, have a God day. to have a God day. I love you to life. In Christ, in Christ Jesus loves you, loves you all the more. All the more. Now give God a great big hand praise in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Amen. Well, Lady T. Uh, so, okay. Uh, this is a new format that we're trying here today, and we're just thankful. Um, God put so many different things in, in my heart, on my heart. And since I'm the senior pastor, I figure go ahead and try it. <laughs> we're so thankful because God has given us the freedom. We're not under constraints and saying you got to do it this way and you have to do it that way. Amen. 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 And so I truly believe in this season that the church will never go back to the way it used to be, which is a good thing. God has used this, this, this season to give us new platforms right. and new ways and to, to reach people. Right. Uh, not just here in the city of Detroit, but across the country. Yeah. And guess what? Through this Facebook platform across the world. Right. Amen. You know, Victor Ward, we've been, we, we're being seen in India, mm. Jamaica, mm. the Bahamas, okay. a lot of places. I, I check the insights and check where who's tuning in and who we're reaching. And we're being, we're being watched and reach, we're reaching people in other states and other countries. All right. To All God right. be the glory. Yes. You should put your hands together Amen. and thank God Amen. for our little church here on 7 Mile, 11249 East 7 Mile Road. We're trying to make a difference yes. in the kingdom. Yes. Yes. And as I was, I was sharing with Lady T, uh, this month is Black History Month. But we don't talk enough about the black history of a black woman. Mm -hmm. And so today, 
I want to uh, I want to teach and uh, try to get this together. Amen. I, I want to preach or teach today and have an open discussion and dialogue with you here in the sanctuary as well as our Facebook family. Amen. Amen. All right. So my sermon topic for this morning is from then until now, the role of women of color in the Bible and their roles of leadership in the church today. From then until now the role of women of color in the Bible and their roles of leadership in the church today. Amen. Amen. So before we go into the word, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you this morning once again saying, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for keeping us from danger, seen and unseen. Lord, we bless your name. We glorify and we magnify your name. Lord, not just because you are God, but because you are our Father, and holy is your name. Yes. Father, we thank you for keeping us through this week as we went to and fro. Lord, we thank you for taking care of our families, our loved ones, our friends. Yes, yes. And so, Father, right now in this sanctuary that has been dedicated to you, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight my strength and my redeemer and it is so and it is so and it is so in Jesus name Amen if you were to turn with me in your Bibles or whatever uh, tool or instrument you're using, your phone or your tablets to the book of Judges the fourth chapter, starting at the first verse, and I'm reading from the New International Version. And the word of God says, Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehod was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. So Sarah, the commander of his army, was based in it's some words here, y'all, so just bear with your pastor. <laughs> was based in Harosheth, Hagonium, because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. And they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidus, was leading. Israel was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoin, from Kadesh in Nephetili, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go! Take with you 10,000 men of Nephetili and Zebulon and let them and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking... The honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulon and Nephetili, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, had left the other Kenites and descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zanaman, near Kadesh. When, the, when they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abdon, had come had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Herosheth Hagoyim to the Kishon River all his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. Hmm. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? 
So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harash and Hagonim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canaanite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazar, and the family of Heber, the Canaanite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. But J.L., Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quickly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Just then, Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Victory word. Can I preach just for a few minutes? Just for a few moments. I just need to preach this for a few moments before we get into to our uh, So I told you already our sermon topic. From then until now, the role of women of color in the Bible and the roles and their roles of leadership in the church today. Deborah played a unique role in Israel's history, serving as the only female judge in a lawless period before the country got its first king. So she is the first female judge. She's the first female judge in a lawless period before the country got its first king. In this male-dominated culture, she enlisted the help of a mighty warrior named Barak to defeat the oppressive general Sisera. Deborah's wisdom and faith in God inspired the people. Thanks to her leadership, Israel enjoyed peace for 40 years. We're talking about the prophetess, the judge, her name is Deborah. Right. Women in the Bible right. with authority. It's amazing to me that God would allow a woman in ancient time to have authority. And we as men in this time frame have a problem with women in authority. I'm not going to go there, though. Uh, I want to preach real quick and then get into this discussion. Amen. Point number one, you can write this down. God uses women not based on physical strength, but based on spiritual trust. I'll say that again. God uses women not based on physical strength, but on but in spiritual trust. He can use you if he can trust you. I'm here to let somebody know today and those watching me by Facebook Live that God will use you. The question is, can he trust you? Too many times in the church world, in, in, in the home, God has to trust a woman because he can't trust a man. Oh, right. And so yeah. we have to understand and using Deborah as the backdrop that God used her because he could trust her. Right. Ladies, can he trust you today? Can he trust you to do what, what he needs you to do in order for you to go to where he's trying to take you? Right. Number two, number two, number two. There is something powerful in a woman's presence. In a woman's presence. When there's something powerful in the house. I don't care what, what, what goes on. The presence of a woman. 
the presence of a woman brings peace to a volatile situation. All right, all right. All right. I'll say that again. Right. There is something powerful in a woman's presence. Something about her presence brings peace to volatile situations. There's just something about the aura of a godly woman that can just bring peace in the midst of a confusion. Yes, yes. There's something about a praying woman. There's something about her that's, that, that, uh, that's in her aura that allows her to do things that, sh that, that mere mortal men could not do. But because the Spirit of God rests on her and, it's, and, and, and it, it grows in her, she's allowed, she has the discernment to know when to speak, when not to speak. What, when to move, when not to move. Why? Because God can trust her. Amen. Amen. Number three, this is my last point right here. There's power in a woman's presence, prayer, and praise. I'll say that again. There is power in a woman's presence, prayer, and praise. Her presence can calm a storm. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yes, yes, yes. A, a woman of God's presence can calm a storm. It's all right. Her prayers can change the direction of a storm. All right, yes, all right. yes, yes, yes. Have you ever been in, in, in some, some situations? I, I can say in my own family, um, some things was going a certain way, but Lady T prayed that thing and prayed it, and it changed the projection. Yes. Amen. The storm Amen. still came. Right. But it wasn't as bad. Amen. Because have you ever been in a storm and, and he said the weather said it's gonna come a certain way and it shifted? It's something yeah, about when a woman yeah, prays yeah, right. how things can shift. I wish I had a witness today that just knows that a godly woman, and that's what we're talking about in Black History Month this month, about godly women in leadership. And I do believe I have some women in the house and watching me by Facebook Live that are in leadership position and you're, you're, you're struggling or you're challenged with it. And I'm here to tell you, don't worry about it. God can trust you. All right. Amen. 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 Last part. His, his, her presence can calm a storm. Her prayers can change the direction of a storm, and this is the part I like right here. And her praise gets God's attention every time during a storm. Right. I, I wish I had somebody. Amen. When, a, when a godly woman praises God, that gets God's attention. Have you ever tried to get God's attention, and you just decided to get on your knees? Yes, God. Just fall prostrate on the floor. Just you and God. And you start praying. For your children, yes. maybe for your for your loved one, your mother, your father. It, it, it's just something about women when they decide to get serious and pray to God. God, that gets God's attention every time. Yes. And I believe here at Victory Word and those watching at home, I got some praying women in the house yes. right now. Yes. Some elect ladies that can get the attention of God through their praise. I wish I had yes. someone who just clap their hands today yes. and say, "Yes, I'm trying to get God's attention." Through my praise, because I'm going through a storm, yes. and even though I'm going through, I'm not through yes. going. Can we talk about it yes. for a few minutes now? Yes. Amen. I'm done preaching. I'm done. All right. Come on. Come on. Can y'all give God a hand praise right there? All right. Amen. 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 Lady T. No. Did y'all enjoy that? Yes, yes, yes. Short changes, amen? No, no, no. <laughs> amen. No, victory word, listen. The, I was, I was, as I was studying, when I was thinking about Deborah, and she was able to, uh, she was a judge, and, and she, she was a wife, so she probably had children. And I began to think about how women that I'm connected to, I'm going to talk to the ones that I see here today and that I know, how you have to juggle everything. 
You have to be a mother, wife, girlfriend. Uh, you have to be a lover. You have to be a, a counselor. You have to be all of these things that we as men look and just expect for you to be. And I was just thinking about how we too often shortchange the women of God that's in our lives and the women of God that we know, whether it be our sisters or our, our aunts or whoever. And we have to sometimes sit back and think about all that they shoulder. Mm -hmm. And so today I want to celebrate all of that which you do. Because without you, you are the mothers of civilization. All right, man. All right. And so as I was studying out of the Theology of Work Project, they, I was looking at through their commentary, and they said, the best of the judges is Deborah. The people recognize her wisdom and come to her for counsel and conflict resolution. And judges, in the fourth chapter that I just read you, the fifth verse, it talks about her being the judge, and the people came to her to, to deal with uh, conflict. So, the military hierarchy recognized her as supreme commander, and in fact, will only go to war on her personal command. You see, Barack said he wasn't going unless she was going with him. Uh -huh. I'm here to declare and decree right now, it's something I don't want to go by myself. I know that's a song to say I'll go if I have to go. That's only if I have to. But I don't want to. So I thank God I got someone that will go with me. Amen. And all of you that have someone that's going with you, be thankful for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those who don't have anyone at this time, don't worry about it because God will supply. Yeah. All you have to do is continue to be the elect lady that God called you to be, and he sure enough will carry you through your storm to your sunshine. Do you hear me? Amen. Her governance is so good that the land had rest for 40 years. If you read in the Judges, the fifth chapter, if you go over one chapter and read the last verse, it's, it talks about Israel being in, in peace for 40 years, a rare occurrence at any point in Israel's history. Some today may find it surprising that a woman, not the widow or daughter of a male ruler, could arise as the national chief of a pre-modern nation. But the book of Judges regards her, Deborah, as the greatest of Israel's leaders during this period. Alone among the judges, she is called a prophet or prophetess, mm -hmm. indicating how closely she resembles Moses and Joshua, to whom God also spoke directly. Neither women, including the undercover agent, Jael, nor men, including the commanding general, Barak, exhibit any concern about having a female leader. Mm -hmm. So if she if, if 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 in the Bible the general doesn't have a problem, the undercover agent didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. God show sure enough didn't have a problem. I'm asking today, Lady T, what's the problem? <laughs> what, what do you see as a problem in today's society that we're living in, where we, men, and not just men, other women, have issues with a woman. And I'm, women in general, but women of color specifically, that's what we're talking about tonight, today. What, what in your opinion, or in your spirit, do you feel is the issue with why some of us have an issue with women in leadership? Mm. Especially in the church. Wow, okay. All right, good question, Pastor. Um, it goes way, 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 way back before me, of course. And um, I believe it's, it's in the upbringing. I mean, it starts, and then it just gets taught, ingrained, and it just kind of carries on, and carries on, and carries on. So it's like a in the DNA almost now with, with men who have problem with women being in charge. Um, like I said, it started way back when and it just keeps festering and growing. And authority, you know, men were raised to be in, the, in authority. You know, they were raised to take care of the women. She stay at home, take care of the baby. So 
when that role kind of started reversing, that's when the things like, oh wait, oh wait. And then when women were trying to get equal rights as men, then men said, well, okay, you want to do this? You want to work a construction job like I work? You want to get brick? You know, you want to do things? So the the times turning around is what's got men, some men in an uproar that women want to be a man or like so, a man. So are you saying that it's a mental thing? It's, it's mental. Mental, mentality, our mentality that's been taught. Been taught. Yes. And so how do we change the course? What do we need to do to <laughs> change our minds? So we change our minds. Change our minds. Change our lives. Yes. Change our lives. We change how we think about things and how we feel about things because um, just like a child can tell you something good, you know, and we thank you. You're young, you're too little, you don't know what you're talking about. And that child can save your life. So it's the same mentality as with women. You're just a woman. You just got to cook, clean, raise our children. I got this. You know, so it's just a mindset that I think that needs to be changed. And, and I've seen it change slowly over time in some areas, but not enough areas to make a, a big difference. Do you think that it, it's necessary to, to, in, the, in the changing of the mindset, it must start in the home? with the husband and the wife raising their children. Absolutely, absolutely, because that's where that teaching starts. Right there in the home, in the womb, really. <laughs> a child is taught things while he's in the womb, so, yes. You know, I will, I, I'd like to give a shout out, kudos to the church we grew up in, Spiritual Israel Church, uh, because in, in the denomination that we grew up in, they did not have a problem with lady pastors, ministers, preachers. Um, that was not taboo in, in the organization I grew up in. So we can say kudos and shout out to them Amen. for being uh, at least um, innovative. They were open at an early stage that knew that it was necessary for the woman, the women of God, that right. to be in an authority position. Right. So we have to definitely say thank you to right. them. And it might have not have started in the beginning of the you know, as, creation as of the world. Yes, exactly. as they involved, yes. Yeah, they heard God. Are there <laughs> any questions in the in the audience right now that we, we'd like to open up as far as in this segment? I have a question, Pastor. Um, they, it's, it's kind of somewhat confusing, not really, be, is that when Deborah was the prophetess, she was she was given the gift from God. That was godly gifts, and she also had compassion. But then farther on in the Bible, it says women ought to be silent in the church. Mm. Why did that flip? If God gave her the ability to do what she did in the Old Testament, and then we get this, women need to be silent in the church in the New Testament. Why is that so? Well, the, to understand. The text that you're talking about in New Testament chronologue that Paul is talking about, we have to be able to understand and exegete the text correctly. Mm -hmm. And so it was not talking about being silenced in the sense of not having to be able to, to speak or preach or anything to that extent. And I won't go into that right now, but that is a, a misunderstanding. Okay. And many times when you don't have um, the 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 true understanding or teaching because you just read the Bible and you read it as what it says without understanding how to exegete a text, which means to really unwrap the text and understand the, the when, the where, the how, what it was talking about in that season and all of those things. Because in order to understand the text, you have to understand the context of what's being said. And that particular scripture has been taken out of context so many times. And so if we go into the Old Testament, God said, and God does neither male nor female. So when, when the man, when we get married, it says, and the two shall become one. Right. So there's, there's something about unity that we have to understand. And we do have to understand that there are different roles that women and men do play that we can't interchange. I can't have a baby. Amen. Nor do I want 
to have a baby. Okay, there's just certain things that that pertains to us as men and women. But the question, and, and I hope I, I answered your question there, um, but there are so many things that we have to continue to evolve in, even in the church world, to understand that there's nothing wrong with women pastors, women preachers, and things. We have had that dogmented spirit for so long that a woman should be seen and not and not don't not heard and all of these things going good and well in the seasons and times we living in right now. We need the woman and the man to be on the same page. Right working together in what? The kingdom. Right. All of what we've been taught has been church stuff. All right. mm -hmm. But now God has allowed thy kingdom to come. Amen. Amen. And so now here at Victory Word and I pray that, that those that are watching understand the difference between just going to church and being kingdom minded. Right. There are some things that Pastor T or Lady T is just good at it. that Pastor Mike ain't no good at it, okay? <laughs> so that doesn't take anything away from me because she's better at it than I am. All that does is strengthen the relationship that we have because we're doing this what? Together. Amen. Amen. So, so we have to really, as men, don't allow our ego to get in the way of our blessing. That's, that's for the men. Don't allow your ego to get in, make you miss out on your blessing because you're trying to do the macho thing. Mm -hmm. No, we're trying to do here at Victory Word, we're trying to do the kingdom thing. All right. All right. The kingdom thing. The kingdom thing makes you think in a, different, in a different type of perspective about how to go forward, how to move forward. And the Bible tells us that a three-chord three strand is stronger which means that we work better together than we are by ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me go just a little bit further. And I'm trying to be technical, savvy. I'm doing a better job at it. I really am. <laughs> Shout out to AP. He's been always saying, you got to work hard on your, work hard on your technical side. <laughs> uh, I want to go into more in the commentary. It says, God does not regard women, oh, and I got ahead of myself asking the question, but De Deborah's service as a prophetess judge of Israel suggests that God does not regard women's political, judicial, or military leadership as problematic. And so my question really was, if God doesn't, why do we? But you did answer that. It is also evident that her husband, Lapidus, and her immediate family had no trouble structuring the work of the household so that she had time to sit under the palm of Deborah to fulfill her duties when the Israelites came up to her for judging. Amen. Let, let's tackle that for a minute. So, a victory word, word, family. Who has to do the dishes? <laughs> oh, Amen. It's in the household. And it says, it, it said it said that the husband, her husband, didn't have a problem with family structure. She, Deborah had a lot to do. She was the head, and she had to go over uh, conflicts, and she was a judge, and, and so I'm sure there was still household things to do. Someone had to do things. So I realized in myself, and let me just say, let me put it on out there, see, because I'm transparent. And I want y'all to know that it has taken a, a long, a mighty, mighty, mighty long time uh, for me not to be so chauvinistic, in my opinion. Because I've always thought, now, now we're having technical difficulties. Uh, engineer, please turn uh, Lady T's mic off. She's, uh, but, and and because when you grow up in a, in, a, in a family where the man is dominant and it's his job to, to take care of the wife and things like that, you have to understand, and like we said earlier, it's generational. It's generational. So as we become more kingdom-minded, we realize that it's not women's work or men's work. It's just work that needs to be done. 
Amen. 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 So I want to share that with our young men. Amen. Don't think that it's a woman's job to, to mm. clean up after you and, mm. and do those things. Oh, it, we're, we're supposed to, to be in, 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 in a, uh, a partnership That's right. in relationships. See, these are the things we need to discuss before we think we in love. We, we just see me in love and think, ooh, boo, 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 all that. And we ain't thought about how bills going to be paid. We haven't thought about how we're going to raise the children if we have children. None of those things. Listen to me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me, young people. This is not the season to fall in love. This is, this is a season to stand up and find out what love is truly about. And so it's time for us to have these kind of discussions. I, I told Lady T, I said, you know, we've been preached for a long time. We need to be taught again. And this is the season that, that we sit down and talk to our young people, talk to our older people, talk to our, everybody needs to talk. Right, uh, right. communication is key. Communication. The, it, it, yes. Because what you needed at 20, you may not need at 30. Amen. What you needed at 30, you don't need at 50. Your, right? your, 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 thi your things in, in your spirit change. Things in your body change. Yes. Yes. So, and, and I don't want to get too far off, off, off the path this morning, but because we're still talking about leadership with, with women of color. And so, and, and Deborah is the backdrop. And so we're saying, though, that in families, in our families, no matter what tragedies we've already suffered, we don't have to keep going that way. God has given us, what, a second chance. And here at Victory Word Church, we are a church that we don't beat you up. <laughs> we pick you up and we watch God do what? Lift you up. Amen. So we have to remember, remember, remember that it is important not where you've been. It's important where you are right now and where you're going. And we're thanking God for where we are going, right? right. Can I get a hand clap right yeah. there just to say that we are, we are really working towards living our future now. Amen. 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 So, today in some societies, in many sectors of work, in certain organizations, women's leadership has become as uncontroversial as Deborah's was, but in many other contemporary cultures, mm -hmm. sectors, and organizations, women are not accepted as leaders or are subject to constraints not imposed on men. Could reflecting on Deborah's leadership of ancient Israel help believers today clarify our understanding of God's intent in these situations? Mm -hmm. Could we serve our organizations and society by helping demolish improper obstacles to women's leadership, would we personally benefit from seeking women as bosses, mentors, and role models in our work? Ask yourself the question, are, am I stronger by myself, or am I stronger with a godly woman? That's the question we have to ask. And I, and I ask, Lady T, because not only we're talking about women of color and leadership in the church, but a lot of you work in the business world, the business sector. Mm -hmm. And what challenges? I know you you work for a Ford Motor Company, and I apologize, but you're part <laughs> you're part of the African American uh, network, network mm -hmm. working for uh, equal pay and equal to be. Whatever that program is, ladies, he's a part of it, amen. And so I, I asked her, because of the struggles that I've seen you go through, to be proven you have to do double the work and you get less and less uh, opportunity to show your strength. Mm -hmm. And thank God you're a godly woman yes. and you've been, you've been working for this particular company almost 30 years now. And so what obstacles have you seen, we know in the church, but even in the, prof in the professional world, and what have you had to do? And maybe you can speak to someone that may be going through some struggles right now, that you can speak a word to them that will catapult them or give them hope 
that there is a bright side on the other side of whatever the uh, situation is. Mm -hmm. Ooh, amen, amen. Um, in the corporate world, well, um, first going in, I felt the diversity <laughs> because I was hired to meet a quota. And pretty much they told me that. So I wasn't hired because I was a good admin, had the skill set and whatnot. I, well, that was part of it, I'm sure, but I was hired to meet a quota. So going in knowing that, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be rough. Yeah. It's gonna be rough. I work for one of the toughest, most hardest working managers in the whole company. And before me, he had five admins. They all quit. And they had wagers going around the office that I wasn't gonna last either. And you've been there 30 years later. And you've been there now 30 years. <laughs> 27 years later, right, right. 27 years later, I am still there. I'm still there. And um, I had to go through a whole lot in those 27 years. Um, it, I had to train the manager how to enjoy what he does. Because if he works hard, he, he was there from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and was just a general. Nobody wanted to talk to him. Nobody liked him like that. They expected, respected his knowledge, but they didn't like him. So I would joke with him. I started to, you know, let him know, smile, you know, it's not as serious and different things. And, and people started noticing, what are you doing to him? He, he laughs a little more. He, he does. And it was just my, my, God-given spirituality to say, okay, if I'm going to work for this man, I ain't going to be stressed like this. So I'm not going to be stressed like him. So can I suggest that the God in you, yes, 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 that leadership quality in you, you allowed it to come out in not, in not a, a harsh way for him to get offended, right, right. but you allowed your femininity. Yes, yes, yes. And, and your and your uh, insight see a lot of times I, I find this with with the female is that instead of using the the feminine side that you have to get yes. things done yes. you want to hit heads yes. with the man yes. and come headstrong yes. with him yes. and that's not going to work yes. not in the is, kingdom right because ladies there's a way to do everything amen. or anything amen there is a way and we just have to learn ways to get what is supposed to be ours and what's for us. Because there we have stubborn men that's determined not to let you be what you're supposed to be. Not to let you be great. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. We have men out there with that DNA in them yes. that just says, hey, no, she can't. She cannot. So, you know, um, so going along, I've, 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 you know, I've been denied positions. I applied for positions and because my manager loved me so much. I was blocked from getting positions. And you know, so I would never, I, I'd interview for a job and wouldn't hear nothing about it, amen. So it was just a whole lot of things in this journey. I was told I had to go back to school. And she did. <laughs> to order to advance. And I had to cook. <laughs> and that's when the real teamwork came in, amen, the real teamwork. This is a man that didn't know how to wash clothes, didn't, or if he knew, he didn't want to. He didn't want to cook, he didn't. But he stepped on in, and I had children then. Going yes. To so it was some long nights for about four years straight. Amen. I've had some good days. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the teamwork got us through it. Got my degree and whatnot. Amen. And then they want to act like I didn't have a degree. <laughs> it didn't mean anything. And I'm like, what well, you said. So I had to deal with that. Yeah. It was a lot, lot going on. I'm in my 40s, and you know, time for me was like, okay, I ain't got much time to keep learning stuff like this. You know, I ain't got much time to keep writing 10-page papers and all of that. And in my mind, I'm thinking that I don't have that. And so I was like, I got to get out of this department. I think I'm one of the few who's been in the same department their whole career. When, that, when my anniversary comes up, it, it's a joke. It's like, yeah, you're this person that's been in this whole, her whole career. Well, why? Well, some of that has to do with me, because I let life challenges get in the way. I mean, we had some tragedies, you know, we had a whole lot going on on a personal 
that just let, I, I didn't have the energy to exert to advancing my career. Then I thought about my husband who, who works nonprofit. Well, that was a little, un, that can be unstable. So I was thinking about stability. And sure, we need benefits, right? We got to have, we got kids, we got to have some benefits. So I thought about my benefits. How it was, was helping carry us through while he was or, you know, dealing with the nonprofit stuff, you know. So it was a whole lot of reasons, but then it, they didn't help, you know. They didn't help excel me because that wasn't in their plans to push me. Now it takes God. It takes God, but it took the, the, the unrest in the society with George Floyd killings and all that before this company wanted to, wanted to talk about diversity, oh, yeah. wanted to talk about uh, social dis uh, social uh, what social disrespect, what do they call it? <laughs> Yes. yes, social injustice is right. All the years I've been with this company, we ain't had not one talk. We ain't had not one meeting until this came about. But through all of that transition mm -hmm. controversy, yes. you didn't lose who you were. No, I did. I may have you know, put me to the back burner. But, I but didn't you kept it. God first. Kept God first, kept God first. And these last couple, two years have been the first couple of years that I've been recognized more, acknowledged more. I finally became a top achiever again. I used to get that back in the day. Top achiever and looking for my next promotion. So, look, well, I told myself. That's a good place to clap. Amen. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, it, the journey has not been easy. But God didn't say it was going to be. Amen. And I, I, I have to keep saying this song. My brother-in-law love is saying, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Right. You know, so you just have to per persevere your way. You have to worship your way through it, pray your way through it, because, look, it ain't designed to be as easy for us as black women. And I learned, especially in the corporate world. Now, I have some directors that are black now. I mean, they just went right away. Just started promoting people, black women, left and right in these last two years. The most I've ever seen in my whole career. So, you know, it, it just be, it, it, it's a um, hardship with the family. Of course, they lost family members and loved ones. But even though it's a bad thing, good things come out of bad things sometimes, you know? And to so, see the diversity, the diversity that's starting to happen now. So what you're saying is that the company that you work for has finally started to evolve and see. Yes, they were pushed to evolve and see that the the un, I mean, we started getting graphs and charts that we would see the difference between the disparity. The disparity. And, and it was like they've never shown that before. So you know. So good things can come out of. Bad situations. Bad situations. Yes. And we have to remember, also, to our viewing audience and those here in the sanctuary, we have to also remember, he will reward you if you faint not. Yes. All yes. Right. You All can't right. give yes. up. Yes. 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 Man. If I can get anything across to our women of God, do not give up. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the naysayers say, Amen. no matter what the system says, mm -hmm. remember, remember, and I just share this with Lady T all the time, your kingdom. Yes. Right. Let this mind be in you yes. that was in Christ. Yes. Yes. I know, and I've seen it myself, the, the, the pain that, the, 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 that women of color go through different things from abuse, physical abuse, domestic violence, substance abuse, all of these things. And, it's, and a lot of it is systematic in society and things have happened and transformed. But you know what? We are almost like, uh, for a lack of a better word, it's just we're, we, our, our people, no matter what you've thrown on us, yeah. you can't kill us yeah. Yeah. and we won't die. Yeah. We're going to be here. Yeah. Because what don't kill you will make you strong. Amen. 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 Because we believe and know that we are God's chosen people. Yes, yes. So. And as the month yes, goes yes. on, I'm going to preach more about who we are and whose we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So we, we are really just thankful. Yeah, I mean, I just like to remind the women, you matter. Amen. You, you matter, matter and you are enough. Amen. Because yes. you have to believe that first. Yes, yes. 
Yes. Will we? We always cowering down and whatnot. No, you matter and you are enough. Yes. And your opinion yes. and all of that counts. Yes. And you have to make it count. Yes. Amen? Yes. God, and you know, we can't be our own stumbling block. Right. And I was right. my own stumbling block for years because I didn't have enough confidence in me to say I can get past this stage. I can get past this person. I can get past this one that's holding the hand, hit my, hit my future in his hand. Right. Yes. And he ended up leaving the, the company and I, I still had to fend for myself. So, you know, put your trust in God. Yes. Because there's many days I wanted to quit. Many days I wanted to throw in the towel because I thought I would never get treated fairly or at least halfway fairly. Right. And I know I made a difference in the department that I work and I still make a difference Amen. in the department I work for. Because I still get calls. I still get you can you do can you can, but don't let don't 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 let them use you either though. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Misuse you because they will. They will. So remember you are strong and you were you were meant to be the backbone. Amen. Because they're gonna be the front. You're the backbone, so you you help you help a push. Amen. You and we have to push our men. Amen. We have to help them. Sometimes when they get <laughs> low in spirit, we we have to be that cheerleader. Yeah. We got to say, "Come on, honey, you can do this. We are dependent on you. Our family is dependent on you. And if he is any kind of half a man, well, he will get up. <laughs> well, he will move from that spot. He will stop having that pity party. Yes, we got to push him, just like they push us." Amen. And remember, I can do all things yes. through Christ. Yes. The yes. And I say that every time I step into that building at work, I can do all things. That became my daily prayer as I walk into that building. Amen. Do we have any other questions in the audience today? The congregation? Anyone have a question? What happens? If uh, if it goes the other way, like you got an aggressive woman, mm. because I've been taught to be in this position and I had to work and struggle, then I, I overcompensate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to prove, trying to prove yeah. that I am as good or better. So I lose my femininity mm -hmm. and overcompensate mm. in that area. That's where, and this is the important part, this is where the kingdom lifestyle comes in. We have to take inventory on ourselves. The black woman has had to be put in the forefront with so much and so many things. You have to really talk yourself down. And when I say down, I don't mean down. I mean bring your spirit in to subjection to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Because we, you have, you have fought so hard and so long, and all of those things. Sometimes you have to, and I've been trying to get us here, big word, to remember. You have to release. You have to, you have to uh, uh, release, reflect, and then re-energize yourself. You cannot be the energizer bunny. <laughs> You cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. And your body will make you slow down. Right. If you listen to it mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. Don't get to the point where you violated it and got passed. Mm -hmm. Now you got heart attacks and high blood pressure and yes. all of these other things. Because God intended us to be what? Happy. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to be happy people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things that we've learned as women and men is learned behavior. That's right. That's right. I saw my mama do it. I saw my grandma do it. I saw my great grandma do it. Or I saw my daddy do it. My great granddaddy, my grandfather, those, and then their son that didn't have a man in the house. So they had to see their mother be the man and the one, and all of that. And, and no matter, we've got so caught up in stereotypical things. We have to come out of that. We have to come out of that. First of all, a woman cannot be the woman and the man. You're, you're not a, you, can, you can only be the great woman that you are. There are great women that raise boys yes. into men. Yes. But they were not the father. You cannot be the father. You can be the great mother. But it takes another man to speak into a man. 
That is just the truth of the matter. There are certain things that a man can't understand when it comes to a woman. There are some things that only a woman can teach her daughter. We have to re realize our roles that we play, but we play them together because we are a family unit. And those that did not come from that lifestyle does not mean that you grew up wrong or bad. You grew up challenged, but God is still God. And that's why the word of God says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. We as a people have to be willing to change. If I'm over aggressive and I really realize that, Lord, teach me how to submit. And if we learn how to submit to God, we know you can't submit to a man if you don't submit to God. All right. All right. All right. All right. And I can't teach I, I can't run the household correctly if I'm not hearing God first. Yeah, right. Before you yeah. and, and for those that's watching and young people, Man. before you start dating someone, find out is God in their life? Yeah. Have they been taught about God yeah, or a, a greater spirituality? Do they love their mother? Yeah. Or did they watch their daddy hit their mother? Because women, we're not going to be hit. Mm. We're not taking hits. So, so I'm just, there's some things we have to go back to what the old folks say. Go back to the old landmark. Yeah. Yeah. And start looking at some things. And we have to train our daughters. Right. And some of us don't, uh, 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 we, you train, tra <laughs> you train your granddaughters. You know, some of you have had to be mothers all over again. But the blessing is you have more experience now, closer to God more now, have a better relationship with God, know when God is speaking to you. In the text today, it said that Deborah was, uh, uh, she walked in the, in, the, in the same footsteps as Moses and Joshua where God spoke directly to her. Did you hear that? In the Old Testament, that didn't happen. He didn't talk directly. We, we live in the season now. Y'all, the women of God can hear God. Yes. When yes. you open up your ear. Yes. And, and we as men and women have to do one thing. That's get out the way. Yes. How do you yes. get out the way? Yes. Bring your yes. ego down. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. I have to bring my ego right. down right. to realize that, yes, I am the head. But the head ain't no good without a body. That's right. That's right. Amen. And as far as the aggressive woman, I've had to, um, I dealt with one, and I just really took it to the side and tried to find out what was going on with her. You know, I was like, look, look, you're just coming off as a little hard. What's going on? You know? And, 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 and sometimes it was just a personal issue, and then sometimes it was just how she was raised. You know, so when you get to, once you get to know a person, then you can speak into that. But if you don't know her, you know, it's hard to say, hey, she's just hard, you know, and, and try to speak against that and don't know her. Would, that That's hard. Would you say in that, and because we want to always keep it back to kingdom. Right. If I'm a kingdom man or woman dealing with someone aggressive, the spirit of the Holy, the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit ought to give me the discernment. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to hear the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and that's why I say too many times we let. And I'm guilty of allowing my ego, mm -hmm. or my 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 gifting, or even my uh, uh, my profession. I'm a counselor, so I'll base it all on that. Sometimes I gotta let all of that go and right. hear God, right. Right. because my expertise in this is not what is needed. Right. What is needed is for me to hear the Word of God. And tell me how to deal with this spirit. That's right. That's because right. some spirits come to challenge you to show you where you ain't. That's right. That's right. A lot of times we think we're on a level mm -hmm. until something comes that challenges us yep. and it really lets us know we ain't where we thought we were. Ooh, that. That's right. So we really have, I, I really just believe more so in this season, all of us. Need to hear God. Hear yeah. Him. Yeah. Hear Him. Take the time to, to, to set up time with Him. Because He'll show you, He'll show you things in your sleep. Yeah. He'll show He'll show you things while you're driving. 
Uh, he, he'll show you things and while you're at your job or doing something, and it'll come up in your mind. You hadn't even thought about and he'll give you the answer on yes. what the situation yes. is, just yes. like that. Yes. That's Lord. kingdom yes. thinking and kingdom yes. connection. Yes. And we are not just, I'm, I, I had to stop saying we, we're not churchmen, because there's nothing wrong with being a good That's churchman. Right. But we are not just churchmen. That's right. That's right. We are kingdom focused yes. to build up the church. Amen. 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 Is, was that good? Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else? Amen. I really enjoyed this today. Um, we're going to do more of this, and we'll even try to take questions from our Facebook uh, family as well to get questions in. And if there's questions, we'll ask you to send them in. We're going to work on uh, our, our production where we pray that it's been good today, our first time in this type of uh, format. And we're just thankful and we're just moving forward. And just remember to tune in next Sunday as we I'll be preaching at, uh, at Faith Assembly Church. And we're looking forward to you just continuing to, to just be the church that God is calling for in this season. Amen. And that is a relationship church. Amen. A church that loves and serves one another. Yeah. Right. Will you give us a hand of praise today for everything that God has done in this house today? If there's one that would like to give their life to Christ, at this time, all you have to do is pray this prayer with this simple prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. And Father, I'm just asking you right now to come into my heart, come into my life. I want to be more like you. I accept the Lord Jesus the Christ as my Savior who died on the cross so that I might have a right back to the tree of life. Lord, we thank you for reconciling us back to you. Father, I want to be more like you. And if you prayed that simple prayer, that's all it took. That's all it takes for us to get back into the will of God. I challenge you to join a Bible teaching church that will teach you the reality of serving a true and living God. And if that church is the big word church, we are a judgment-free zone. Amen. Amen. We don't beat you up. We pick you up and we watch God lift you up. And if that's the church and you'd like to be a part of our fellowship, just call the church office at 313-243-4512. You'll be glad you did. Someone will call you back, and they will invite you to be a part of our fellowship. Amen. Well, Victory Word, it's been a great day. Yes. And we thank God for you. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Remember, remember, remember. There is victory in the word, and we are doing what? Living, Living our future now. now. God bless you. We God love bless you. you. Awesome we'll see you week after third Sunday. Amen. In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. God yes. bless you. Amen.